hyperfocus lock. You sit down to do something quick. Six hours later, your legs are numb, you forgot to eat, and you know way too much about the mating habits of ants. They call you too obsessive. But what if this so-called flaw was actually genius in disguise? The world? Gone. Hunger? Optional. Time? What? Your brain doesn't just concentrate, it vanishes into the task like a magician's trick. It's like opening TikTok for five minutes and waking up next Tuesday. It looks like malfunction, but it's actually a mental speed run. This trait, hyperfocus, shows up in ADHD and autism. The same brain that forgets laundry for a week can reverse engineer a rocket engine in a weekend. Isaac Newton once stared at the sun on purpose during an optics experiment. Temple Grandin rewired the livestock industry by obsessively studying animal behavior. Elon Musk vanishes into 80-hour problem-solving loops like it's a hobby. Science calls it a prefrontal cortex loop, where executive function gets hijacked. But for the right mind, it's cheat mode for deep work, innovation, and impossible detail. It's not focus. It's falling down a rabbit hole and setting up a lab down there. Sure, it can burn you out or shut off the outside world. But when it works, it lets you build what most people can't even picture. But sometimes, your brain doesn't just go deep, it goes sideways. Sensory crossfire. You hear a name and see a color, taste strawberries when you read a word, smell shampoo, and picture the number seven. Welcome to synesthesia, where the senses refuse to stay in their lanes. At first, it sounds like your brain is glitching. And it is, beautifully. This is what happens when sensory wiring overlaps. Suddenly, sound becomes color, time becomes shape. Thursday? Definitely green. To most people, it's confusing. To a few, it's a creative god mode. Wassily Kandinsky painted music. Pharrell Williams says he sees chords in color. Nikola Tesla saw inventions flash into his mind, triggered by sound, light, or touch. Brain scans confirm it. Synesthetes have unusual bridges between sensory areas most brains keep separate. The result? Wild boosts in metaphor, memory, and creativity. It doesn't just blur the rules, it rewrites the operating system. But what if your brain doesn't remix reality? It replays it, endlessly. Looping memory. You're lying in bed, it's quiet, and your brain whispers, hey, remember that cringy thing you said in 2012? Of course you do, because now it's on loop. Again, and again, and again. This isn't just memory, it's the emotional version of a gif that never dies. Some brains won't let awkward moments go, they rewatch them replay them like forensic evidence. It's common in people with anxiety, OCD, or freakishly high memory retention. That same loop that keeps you up at night? It's also the slow cooker for genius. Inventors, writers, comedians, they often obsess until things click. Tesla claimed he could mentally build machines and run them for weeks in his head before ever lifting a tool. That's not just memory. That's a private simulation chamber. Looping thoughts can be brutal but they sharpen detail, feed perfectionism, and train an inner critic who will not rest until it's right. It's not always fun, but for some minds, looping is where brilliance brews. And sometimes, your brain doesn't just loop time, it loses track of it entirely. Time perception drift. You sit down for five minutes, then it's dark outside. You missed lunch, two texts, and apparently, an entire season of your life. This isn't just distraction. This is time perception drift. Your brain didn't lose track of time. It decided time was irrelevant and started chasing dopamine like it was late for a flight. To most people, time is a steady drumbeat. To you, it's jazz. Improvised, unpredictable, somehow always skipping to the weird part of the song. You're not the only one. Some minds don't follow time. They bend it to their tempo. Thelonious Monk didn't follow the beat. He made the beat follow him. Stephen King called it a trance. The story wrote itself. Olympic athletes say the world slows down mid-sprint, like reality gave them bullet time. Science says it's the insular cortex, dopamine regulation, and flow states. But let's be honest, it feels like the universe hit pause just so you could finish one more idea. You're not zoning out, you're phasing in. And while that might make Google Calendar your arch nemesis, it could also be why your best ideas feel like they came from outside of time. But what if it's not time that slips? What if it's your tolerance for error? Error obsession loop. You fix one typo, then another, then scrap the whole sentence because now the vibe feels off. 
That's not perfectionism. That's your brain stuck in an error obsession loop. It's not about being picky. It's about being haunted by the tiny wrong thing. The comma that stares into your soul. The pixel that's one shade too bright. The sentence that just keeps itching. This is what happens when your brain's quality control dial is stuck at 300%. It won't let things go until they feel exactly right. Sound exhausting? It is. Blame the anterior cingulate cortex, the part of your brain that's always asking, wait, is that correct? Sometimes it's helpful. Other times, it's 2.41 a.m., and you're rewriting the grocery list for clarity. But this same glitch has built masterpieces. Steve Jobs obsessed over the inside of machines most people would never open. Leonardo da Vinci reworked his inventions and paintings endlessly. Kubrick shot 127 takes, just to get one look. It's not just perfectionism, it's pattern hunger. And for some people, satisfaction is the one thing they'll never leave in the final draft. But what happens when the glitch isn't in your thoughts? It's in your connection to the people around you. Social disconnection. You enter the room and immediately feel like there was a meeting you missed. The vibe's wrong. The eye contact's too much. The silence, weirdly loud. This is social disconnection. It's common in people with autism, ADHD, or social anxiety. Like playing a conversation sim where everyone else got the tutorial, and you spawned in late. Small talk feels like a trap. Parties like alien planets. You say the wrong thing, or nothing, then spend five hours replaying the scene like it's security footage. You start to feel separate, outside the group, but what if that distance is the gift? Alan Turing cracked codes without needing to crack a smile at office banter. Bobby Fischer dismantled legends on the board, then ghosted the planet. Kafka whispered his way into history. Because when you're not wired to mirror the group, you don't follow its blind spots. You see around the noise and break the pattern by never joining it. Science links this to the brain's default mode network, the part that models other people's thoughts. Sometimes it runs quiet, but that silence leaves space for something else. Independent thought. You might not blend in, but maybe that's why you stand out. But what if the next glitch doesn't just disconnect you from others? It disconnects you from reality itself. Dream logic bleed through. You're awake, but your thoughts haven't gotten the memo. Ideas loop strangely. You see patterns in random things. You start making connections that don't make sense, but somehow feel true. It's like your brain left the dream app running in the background. This is dream logic, where metaphors hijack reason and nonsense feels like revelation. It can be weird, confusing, even embarrassing when you try to explain it out loud. But this is also where some of the world's wildest creativity begins. Salvador Dali used to nap with a key in his hand, just so he'd wake up the second he entered that twilight dream state. Carl Jung mapped entire psychological systems using symbols he saw in dreams. David Lynch built movies that feel like nightmares edited in Final Cut. Science blames it on the default mode network. Or maybe it's REM sleep logic that forgot to clock out. But whatever it is, it lets you build meaning out of chaos. Jump from A to G without stopping at B. Paint with intuition instead of blueprints. It's not always practical, but when it hits, it's like glimpsing a new language that only you can speak. And maybe the deepest glitch isn't in your wiring, but in your story. The outsider effect. You didn't grow up with the map. You were handed the maze. The rules never made sense. The language didn't quite fit. Everyone else seemed to get the memo, but you missed it. That's the outsider effect. You won't see it on a brain scan but you feel it in every group you don't quite fit into. It hurts. Isolation. Misunderstanding. Being asked to just act normal, whatever that means. And yet, somehow, being left out lets you see the whole picture. Satoshi Nakamoto flipped the financial system, anonymously. Frida Kahlo turned her pain into a protest of identity. James Baldwin translated a nation to itself by standing on the edge of its culture. Being excluded lets you see the pattern. Being misread sharpens your observation. Not being invited gives you the freedom to show up as something no one saw coming. Science calls it cultural frame switching. Artists call it edge vision. You might just call it being you. Maybe you've always felt it, like the glitch was still loading. But if it ever finishes, you'll know. Because when it clicks, every piece that once made you feel broken will finally make sense. We explain a lot around here, 
Subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next.